By default, 3D toolpaths in HSM Works attempt to machine the entire model defined in the job using a given strategy. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at our first example. I'll simply apply a 3D parallel toolpath and use a 1 8 ball. In this example, what I'd like to do is to contain the toolpath within the cavity. So this brings us to the purpose of our video. You see, the trick to 3D programming is learning how to contain a toolpath within a given area of your model. So, we're going to look at various techniques we can use to contain 3D toolpaths. Along the way, I'll throw in some tips and tricks for 3D programming as well. As we apply different techniques, I'm going to duplicate the operation using Control D so we have a reference point to quickly see the changes we've made. Let's go ahead and edit this duplicate parallel operation, move to the geometry tab, and look at the machining boundary. I'm going to change it from a silhouette to a selection and simply select an edge around the cavity, and that's going to tangentially select all of the edges and create a containment boundary. Now I said I wanted to show you some tips and tricks, so let's quickly pop over to the Passes tab and turn on Machine Steep Areas. This is a neat one. It's going to make a more dense toolpath in areas that are steep. So here we can see we have more slices in steep areas, but more importantly for the purpose of this example, we've contained the toolpath within a given area. Now we can duplicate the toolpath again and create a containment area on the outside of this cavity. I can right click and select edit. And all I need to do to create a containment area on the outside of the cavity is add a second chain. So now the toolpath is going to be contained within the two regions. So with that, we can select OK. And our toolpath is just machining outside of the boundary. Now the last thing I want to show you on this example is how we can use the Heights tab to contain a toolpath. So let's make a fourth duplicate and edit that one. On the Heights tab, I'll simply go to the From Top area and I can select any edge or point on the model, and from the bottom I can select another edge. As I'm sure you can imagine, when we regenerate the toolpath, it's going to be contained within those two heights. So there's your first few containment methods. Let's move on to the next example. In this example, I've got a roughing strategy that's roughing out my part. Now unfortunately, I'd like to keep those walls intact when I'm machining the part to maintain some rigidity. As you can see, I've already created a second or simplified configuration of the model and inserted it into my assembly. So if I duplicate this roughing operation, we're going to look at how we can drive the operation off of another model. Moving to the Geometry tab, I'll roll down to the Model Override, and now I'll simply select the other model. As a quick trick, if we hold shift down, then we're going to select a transparent face instead of selecting through the face. What the model override is doing is ignoring the model that was defined in the job and machining this strategy using the model selected just for this strategy. One of the cool things about using a model override is if we use stock simulation, when I run my simulation and ultimately show the stock that's left on the model, it's still driven off of the initial geometry in my job. So, I've overridden this operation off of another configuration, but my gouge checking is still against my initial job. It's a very powerful feature. What happens, however, when we end up in a situation where we've got some holes that we want to drill with a later operation, and the current machining strategy is plunging into those holes? So what I've done here is created some patch surfaces. Again, we're going to duplicate the operation and look at how we can control the tool path using our patch surfaces. I can select Edit, move to the Model Override, and select those surfaces. Now, had I just selected these surfaces, then we would just be machining these surfaces because, again, remember, the Model Override is forgetting the model that's defined in the job. So in this case, when we're using a patch surface, we want to select the actual model as well, so the operation is machining both our patch surfaces and our initial model. I can select OK, 
And now we have a nice toolpath that goes over top of my patch surfaces. Now what if we didn't want to machine over top of those patch surfaces and instead simply wanted to avoid them? Well in that instance we would use check surfaces. So let's go ahead and edit this new operation, turn off the model override, and instead select check surfaces. We can select the surfaces we want to avoid and select OK. So now we have a machining operation that machines just the model and avoids those surfaces, again stopping the tool from plunging down through that hole. While we're looking at check surfaces, I want to duplicate this operation and show you one more trick we can use with a check surface. You'll note below the check surface option, we have an option to touch check surfaces. Touch check surfaces, in effect, inverses what a check surface does. So instead of avoiding those surfaces, those surfaces are going to be the only surfaces that are machined. This is extremely powerful because it's still aware of the model, so we're still creating a toolpath that's fully aware of the model defined in the job. As a final note, I should point out that check surfaces can be a surface on your model as well. They don't need to be created patch boundaries as they were in this case. Well, we've quickly looked at several methods we can use to contain 3D toolpaths, that being a containment boundary, containing using heights, containing by overriding the model definition, containing using additional model faces, as well as check surfaces and the ability to invert our check surfaces. Each of these techniques require geometry selections. In our next video, we're going to look at techniques we can use that don't require any geometry selections, but are simply parameters within the toolpath.